Hi Year 9, so I've had a look over your answers to the work I asked you to submit last week. It's all really good, so well done. So we're going to go over the answers here and I just need you to mark your work. So if you get a, a different colour pen in your hand, ready to mark and do any corrections. So there's not that many corrections you're going to need done because you did so well, but um, do get one and just fill in any corrections and I'll go over this nice and quickly here. So. Um, last day we were doing page 133 or that's her, where we finished off what I had asked you to submit to me and we had to label things on this diagram. Now there's actually a wee mistake on this diagram I noticed as I was um, doing it. So see the way here the day and night is actually tilted with the axis. That doesn't happen and that's actually really important for what we are learning today. So that should be straight up and down. This bit should be shaded in and then this wee bit here should not be shaded in. So I'm going to tip X mine out, right, just to show you. You don't have to. If you don't have tip X or anything, that is fine because we are going to be talking about that today anyway. Okay, that's a wee bit better. I can cope a bit better with that now. So anyway, back to what the question was actually asking us. Uh, label the side of the earth, but it's daytime. So it's going to be the side that is facing the sun. So here and nighttime, the side that is facing away from the sun. Axis is the imaginary line up and down the middle, uh, North Pole, South Pole. Okay, now question two, your answers may be opposite from mine and that is fine. So I've put a wee note here. I'm assuming that if I'm standing here, right, I'm, I've made the assumption that I'm facing south, okay? If you have assumed that you're facing north, your answers will be the opposite from mine. So if I'm facing south, then east would be over here. So the sun would rise in the east, which is over here at A. If you have said you're facing north, then your answer there would be E. And then here, the sun sets E. Um, if you had assumed you were facing north, yours would be A. So these two would be swapped over. Midday for both B. Which direction is south? Again, I have said uh, D, but if you have assumed the other way, you could maybe... It would be, well, I suppose B, even though B's one way. Uh, where would the sun be in the morning? C. If you've done the opposite for me, you'll have F. And then afternoon, F. And if yours is the opposite, C. So hopefully you understand what I mean by that. And then very quickly, this one here, again, really well done. So the sun appears to move across the sky each day. The earth spins on its axis in 24 hours, and we call this time one day. If you're on the side of the earth that is facing the sun, it is day. And if you're on the side of the earth that is facing away from the sun, it is night. And the earth spins anti-clockwise as viewed from above. That's actually something I don't think I remembered to mention last day. It's one of the really cool facts. Everything in our solar system, apart from one thing, spins anti-clockwise. Fun fact of the day. Okay, if you turn to page 134 for me, you can see what we're going to be looking at today, and it is the, the four seasons. So just before I actually teach you how they happen, um, just a little fun activity. So um, <clears throat> this is just a wee thing to get you thinking about different seasons, really. So what if it was always winter? So in a wee second, I'm going to ask you to pause the video so that you can write down anything. So anything that you think would be a positive if it was always winter? Um, anything that you think would be negative if it was always winter and just any random wee interesting facts there okay so just spend a couple of minutes on that so pause me now fill that out on page 134 obviously everyone's will be different and then we'll move on right hopefully you came up with some interesting things I always really like hearing what everyone says for that because people always think about things that I wouldn't ever think about so um, over on page 135, there's another wee activity for you to do that you can see here. Normally we would do on mini whiteboards, but I'm just going to ask you to um, do it on a piece of paper. Okay, so if you get a, a piece of paper and just split it into four, so you can fold it in four, so you can just draw lines down into fours, and then think about the, the four different seasons. And then instead of month here, actually, let's do seasons. So on many way words describe what each season is like. So for summer, say uh, what the temperature would be like in summer, uh, what the length of the day is like in summer, is the sun high or low in the sky, and lots of other things to do with that. Um, do the same then for all four seasons. So pause me now and do that.
Right, so hopefully you have um, completed that. And just before we fill in the rest of page 135, I want to try and demonstrate for you now uh, how the seasons happen, okay? So I've got a torch here, which is gonna be my sun, okay? And I have a little, I'll try and show you this better. No, that's not working. I have a little um, wee tiny earth here that's going to be my earth. So the earth takes 365 and a quarter days to rotate around the sun. So if we have our sun in the center, sorry, trying to demonstrate this without um, blinding it. If this is our sun here, the little torch, then the earth will go round the sun like this. And we would say that is orbiting the sun. So the earth orbits the sun once every year. Okay. So um, whenever the earth is in different positions um, compared to the sun, then it's all because of that tilt on the earth's axis because of the tilt different areas of the earth are tilted towards the sun and some are pointed away from the sun so if i put this back here right here's my earth and this finger that i have here my index finger is going to be the north pole and i will have my thumb on the south pole okay now see the way this is positioned here if there was no tilt on the earth's axis do you see how half of the earth is in daylight and half is in nighttime? And as the earth spins on its axis, then you're going to get 12 hours of sunlight and 12 hours of darkness if the axis is completely straight. Now, because the earth is actually tilted, it's more like this, okay? And whenever we do this, I'm hoping you will be able to see that, say you're in the, so see the way my, my north pole finger is tilted towards the sun, then the northern hemisphere, which is where we live, is tilted towards the sun. And do you see how, if this is rotating around, I'm trying to show you with this pencil, if this earth is rotating around, at this position, we've got a really, really long period of day, and then a really, really short, period of night. So as this is rotating round, the bit of the earth that is tilted towards the sun is getting really, really long days and really, really short nights. So that's the northern hemisphere here. So that's going to be our summer. Hopefully you had thought that already. Whenever the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, we get really, really long days and really, really short nights. So that's our summer. But see in the southern hemisphere at that time, do you see how if we lived down here, we would only have a really short section, which is in the sun, and a really, really long section, which is in the, the darkness or the nighttime. So whenever it's our summer in the Southern Hemisphere, it is their winter. So they're getting the opposite of us. Now, just before I move this into the next position, one thing that is really cool is that, do you see down here where my thumb is? There's a wee section here, and this would be like, wouldn't last for the whole season, maybe 28 days or so, but there's a wee section here that doesn't get any daylight at all. And the opposite is also true up at the top. There's a wee section here that doesn't get dark at all. Okay, so here's my sun. As the earth rotates around, whenever it's down here, it's pretty much half and half. Okay, so it is pretty much half and half and that would be our, um, what was this one? This was our summer. So this would be our autumn down here. And that's whenever we do have half and half. Now, as six months later, whenever the earth, I've lost my North Pole there, whenever the earth is over here, do you see how now, this is maybe a wee bit more obvious than the last one, our Northern, us in the Northern Hemisphere, we now have a really, really long section, which is in the darkness or the nighttime. So this would be our winter, whenever we have really short days and really, really long nights. And the Southern Hemisphere, is the complete opposite. So whenever it's our winter, we're tilted away from the sun. The Southern Hemisphere is tilted towards the sun and they get really long days and short nights. And a quarter of a year later, we're back up to half and half. So um, that would be our spring. Yeah, okay. So this way here, I think showed it the, the best. No, I can't get it back again. Oh yeah, there, that's good there. Okay. 
So there is a really good diagram in your notes to show this if this little demonstration hasn't worked for you. So let's go back to the notes. Okay, hopefully that wee demonstration helped a little bit. As I say, there is a wee diagram in here which is really good and I'll try and link a different YouTube video for you as well just to help with that. Okay, so let's get page 135 filled in. So fill this in with me here. So the earth is tilted at an angle of, it's 23.5 degrees on its axis. So it spins on its axis and at the same time orbits the sun. One complete orbit takes 300 and 65 days, we'll forget about the quarter, um, which is also known as one year. At one position on the Earth's journey around the Sun, the North Pole will be tilted towards the Sun. This means that the Northern Hemisphere receives more concentrated heat than light from the Sun and days are long. So this is us, we're in the Northern Hemisphere, so this is our summer. Six months later, the Earth's tilt means that the North Pole is tilted away from the Sun and the Southern Hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun. So the Southern Hemisphere is now receiving the concentrated heat and light from the Sun and the days will be long in the Southern Hemisphere. Our days will be shorter. This is our winter. Spring and autumn are the in-between times when neither the Northern or Southern Hemispheres are tilted towards the Sun. So this is this little bit I was saying about in that we demo. In our winter, there will be some time when the North Pole receives no light at all and it's night all the time. However, in our summer, the opposite is true. It, there'll be times whenever the North Pole is in constant day. And whenever the North Pole is in constant day, the South Pole will be in constant night and vice versa. Oh, over the page on 136, that's what it's asking us to fill in there. So write that in for me. So I've just summarised it like that. The South Pole will be the opposite of the North Pole. Okay, so these diagrams here are really good. So if our Sun is in the centre, over here, whenever the Northern Hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun, then if we trace out a line, in fact that's on the diagram underneath, see how here, this section here, is a really, really long section in the daylight, and then here is a wee short section in night time. So this is going to be our summer. And then the opposite over here, if we look roughly where we are, the short bit in the daytime, longer bit in the nighttime. And then, as I say, the um, in between times are pretty much half and half. So, if we're looking at the southern hemisphere, the opposite, whenever we've got really long days, they've got really short days, and then vice versa over here. Hopefully, that is starting to make sense. One other thing that I um, want to point out as well. Um, do you know the way the sun is really really high in the sky in the summer and then low in the sky in the winter? That's all because of this tilt as well. So whenever we're tilted towards the sun, like here, that's whenever the sun appears really high. And whenever the sun lands on us, we get a really really concentrated um, ray of light. And that's why it's warmer. Whereas whenever we're tilted away, the when, let me go back up here again. So whenever we're tilted away, whenever the sunlight lands, it's got a bigger area to spread over. And that's why the sun is weaker for us in the winter time. Okay. Okay, so 137 was just a wee demo that we would have done in class and I tried to replicate with my torch in my little world there. Um, what I want you to do now is to try and fill out page 138. Okay, so if we'll have a little look at this. Um, I have a feeling there is a wee mistake on this. Let me check. Yeah, um, these two are the wrong way round. So see if this is June, because we go like this way round the sun. If this is June, then this one here will be September. And the one at the top will be March. They've got that the wrong way round. Now, you're not gonna know some of these facts off by heart. Um, hopefully you'll know by the month what um, the season is. I'm not going to tell you these, I want you to um, look this up. So a typical day length for the summer time, a typical day length for the winter time, and by day length we mean how long we have daylight for. Typical temperature, again you can look that up, and then what season it is in Australia, so that's always going to be the opposite of what it is with us. And in the wee explanation bits here, you're going to be talking about the, the tilt on the Earth's axis, and why that means it's a certain season for us and a certain season for Australia. 
So you've got this page 137 to fill in by yourself and page 100, oh sorry that was 138, and page 139 to fill in by yourself and then I'll ask to see these pages, okay, and we'll go over these next lesson, which I think is Friday, okay. So hopefully that's clear, uh, make sure you ask me anything if you're stuck. Bye.